Recorded Recording presents an unabridged recording, The Lord of the Books of the Fifty-Five Ars Hymens of Stone, by J. H. R. F. R. 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 M. A. R. Tolkien. Narrated by this guy, and now, The Fellow in the Ring. It was a fine night, and the sun was shining through the fluttering leaves. There was a large crowd at Bag End, elves, dwarves, and men. There were many Bagginses and Boffins, Chubbs, Spurps, Merry and Pippin and another, Hardor and Hurin and Turin and B, and also many Fooks and Brandifux, and a selection of Herds, Brace Girlies, Cockhouses, Good Bodies, Hornblowers, and Proud Faggots, the folk of Arnord, the men of Anuminas, besides Lake Evendim, Meneldil, son of Anandim, and in a corner alone several other counts. Well, Elrond was there, and well, the Lady Arwen was there. Then a number of other people came. Here we all are, said Gandalf. What's going down? Elrond raised his eyes and looked at him. Oh, nothing. Just a secret council concerning the Valley of Terror in the land of Mordor. Barad Dur, Mount Doom, Sauron, our enemy of old. Gandalf was getting bored. Now I'm going to show you my testicles. They're very large, he said, not to mention the dick. And they spluttered and puffed when he took it out. Enormous it looked thrust out like a slimy arm, red, glistening, and flecked with thousands of faded warts, with two old and hoary bulges, soft as butter, like two huge sweating and slippery stones, and edged with large white pubes, soft and strangely fragrant. It's red, said Boromir. It seemed to have been much used by Gandalf himself on his own arts. It's a big prick, this, and very peculiar, said Sam. At the far end was a beautiful hole that trickled spunk. It's big, said Boromir. There were armies of flies of all kinds buzzing round the brown spunk, and Frodo thought how rich and beautiful was its colour, how perfect was its spunkness, but it was bending steadily to the right. It's bending steadily to the right, said Boromir. Then deep folds in the shack were discovered unexpectedly. It was an admirable thing, and altogether precious, and in places boggy. "'His knob has grown long indeed,' said Gimli. "'His knob has grown long,' said Aragorn, and dread was in his eyes. Gandalf looked at Frodo, and Frodo looked at him. He looked at Frodo and smiled, watching Frodo's face. Frodo returned his gaze, but said nothing. For Hobbit looked at him. Gandalf looked quickly at Frodo, but he had shut his eyes. They looked hard at one another, or something.' The wizard's attention seemed suddenly to be fixed on Frodo's beautiful golden ring. He was fingering his great horn and frowning. At that moment the hobbits huddled together with their backs to the wall. There was silence. At last, as if they had come to an agreement without any words being spoken, Gandalf thrust the end of his staff into the midst of Frodo's withy windle valley. Like a gay, he plunged deep into the back door, moving constantly in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, with a sound of neat break, break neat. His bare butt gleamed in the light of the fire, as if it glowed still in memory of the sun that had gone. Ah, said Aragorn, Venus now filled all Frodo's crack. It seemed to grow larger as it plunged deep into his big brown skin behind. Slow and stiff like, he thought no longer of cabbages and dragons and potatoes. Never before had any man mounted him. No cry came from him. He shut his eyes and clung to his foreskin, with his feet as well as with his hands. A loud scream came from Mary. Yes, more. Ass, the old fuck said. Gimli stared with wide eyes. Fuck, he cried, and letting his axe fall, he covered his face with poo. Tom Bombadil breathed heavily and leaned against Sam, and he farted twice, one loud, and the other soft but very clear. Pippin yawned. Bilbo laughed. The cunt. Great ass, said Elrond, looking at Frodo. P.S. Hooray! But Frodo, without any clear idea of why he did so, began to sing. A boner, 
feel it. A boner comes hot. A bit of fresh meat will go down sweet. I've a mind to root thee now. But harder than stone is Gandalf's bone. With the bone he boned my fucking bottom. The old hole was now being cleared a little. Don't stop, said Merry. Evidently, Merry was aroused. His hand was groping in his pocket. He too was gazed. Boromir had a long hawk sword, proud and erect. The wizard seized it. His hand jerked it. Don't do that, said Boromir. A spasm of anger passed swiftly over the wizard's face. If you don't let me blow your dung, said the wizard, I shall sing a song right down your hole and out through the hill. I don't care, answered by our my believe bulwark of Boromir. Gandalf took Boromir's boggy bottom and, clutching the sides, put his mouth to the crack and began singing into it in a low voice. A lord of wisdom and fright and shred, quick to fight, to fight, a horny bastard who fucks at will. He paused. That's me, he shouted. With dwarf and hobbit elves and men, and beast in den, in their own seamen, he's fox in drag. Then Elrond, as was his custom, began to chant softly. When my cock comes, I sit and think of but there were before. For still there are so many bounds that I have never seen. And I shit upon my hair. That is a song, he said. All about breakfast, Strider smiled. Come then, he said to Gandalf. Come. Come. Not yet, said Gandalf, and his cock plunged much faster than his girth promised into Frodo's deep girly passage with steep moist walls of brown shit, brown as fallow fields by night. If I don't come soon, he cried, pointing to Legolas, I will consider elven tongue, and lifting his hand he pointed south, and his voice sank to a whisper, Put your foot in it, or should I say your finger? Legolas ran out, crying out for help, like a glass filled with piss. Let's get hold of Nob, said Nob, to Nob and Bob. Nob, even our Nob is put in Nob, followed by Nob, said Nob. Gandalf withdrew, breathing hard, and then began sucking his stiffy, like a cow going down to drink. They stared at him in alarm for a moment before he gasped. He took it out of his mouth and spat. Then suddenly he put it to his eye and laughed. I can see sperm. Just a mouthful each, for all of us. Bilbo got up and looked at him with thorough disgust. At once a great spout of cum sprang out. Frodo heard the splash of cum. It foamed about his feet. He felt the quick heave and surge as Gandalf came through the windows onto the gardens and the trees, the elves and the chairs, and the spoons and knives and bottles and Aragorn, son of Arathorn and the lanterns, and the crumbs, and cracker paper, and the faces of his friends, and fell to the ground in the midst of the company, as he drained his woody with skilful strokes, and with a last spurt, like a flash of white fire, covered poor Sam. Gandalf stroked it gently, and then he blushed and turned hastily away. Sorry. Chubbs. It's warm, said Sam. The scent of mushrooms was rising. Well, well, that's over said the wizard, struggling to his feet. It's no small feat to have come so far, said Gandalf gently. You see, I have written Gandalf is here in Sprog. Ah, I've never felt so spent. And now what about you, Frodo? What about me, said Frodo? I'm bruised and in pain, but it's not too bad. He said no more. He found breathing painful. I am sorry said Gandalf, wiping his mouth. But I felt so queer. Why? You'll be beating off Mr. Bilbo next, said Sam. At length Caliborn spoke. Sit now, Frodo of the Shire, on my tongue. Frodo looked up. Fuck, he muttered, and then burst into tears. And towers fell, 
fortresses were burned, and flames went up into the sky.